and this will go through App Engine, uh, an end-to-end -end project using Data Store, App Engine, Firebase, Jin, Golang. The point to explore making a full end-to-end -end product, all the steps required. We'll even address things like Canary releases, anything you'll need to make a production quality app. The general architecture is going to be based off a website, an API, and Firebase. So we're going to have a just a dummy front end where we're going to authenticate against Firebase. We're going to have an API that we build in Golang and Jin. Uh, that's going to be residing on App Engine. And we're going to authenticate that with Firebase and just check against Firebase as an identity provider and ensure that the person invoking the API is allowed to do so. You might choose to use App Engine because it's a platform as a service, so you can build a whole application. You can build microservices, it controls uh, static content, you can control the number of instances and the speed at which it scales. It's got cron jobs, it uh, has tasks, and you've got this really handy DNS routing, so you can set up your URL or your host name really, really quickly. So uh, it's got a lot of stuff encapsulated within the one tiny little unit. It means you don't have to know everything about Google cloud in general you just have to know app engine quite well so it's a good starting point if you're new to the cloud before we get started we're going to have to set up our command line so that we can use app engine g cloud all that stuff so if you've not done so already use g cloud config configurations create and then create your configuration in this case i'm going to use debater of math i've already set it up so don't worry about me and then you can activate the configuration. When you create it, it activates automatically, but if you've already set it up, you can call gcloud config configurations, activate, and then your configuration name. A good best practice so you don't screw anything up is use gcloud config get value project just to ensure that you're using the same, the project that you want to be using. We're next gonna need to quickly authenticate our gcloud command line. So use gcloud auth login, It'll open up the browser and then log in using your Google credentials. Really quickly, let's just set up the project folder. So in a project folder, then uh, make a command directory and it should get so that you can push to your remote repository and then make a scripts folder and echo the name of the project into a readme. So you just got all the basics in place. Now to get started, let's create a a main go file so we can just set up a hello world example so we can deploy and test our app engine deployment i'm going to rip through this part really quickly but this is a super important part of how app engine works so we've got the app.yaml file this file basically defines how the app engine deployment works so it's going to take in um, handlers static content runtime it'll define your services uh, how it scales all that good stuff. You can check it out online on the uh, Google Docs. So they've got a pretty thorough document on how the app YAML works. Here we'll just rattle through and put in some basic settings. Uh, some key things to watch out for are the service definition. So this is how you would do a microservice. Now you always have to have a default service. Uh, that's how App Engine is designed. So you have to have a default service. Um, if you don't define the service, it will become default, but you can have multiple different services. So I could call a service admin, for example, and then one customer and uh, put them in different folders and deploy them separately. And they would all be within the same App Engine deployment. I mentioned earlier that App Engine can display static content. This is pretty useful if you want to have a basic uh, front-end application. You can define a static folder and then you can point your handlers to a static folder. So I'll quickly show how that can be done using the app.yaml. I made a tiny little typo here, so it should be max max instances, not max instance. And then go ahead and deploy your app by using a gcloud app deploy and then the dot to signify the current directory. While that deployment is happening, you can open up another terminal and you can set up your Go modules. To do so, you go go mod init and then you do the URL that would point towards your GitHub repository or it can actually be anything you want, but uh, that's general standard practice. So in this case, I'm doing github.com slash mousybusiness slash Google App Engine API. And once that's all set up, anytime we do go get, that should install into the go mods. When your deployment's finished, you might notice that if you actually navigate using go app browse, 
you're not going to actually say anything because it's not serving any content on the default URL. So if we point our base URL, which is just slash, uh, to that static file, which is static slash meow text we made earlier, and then we define uh, something called upload. It's an, it's an optional regex match in the YAML, which I think it's, it uploads the static file in such a way that it can be served as static content. And of course, you need to redeploy using app deploy. You can use the flag quiet, not quite, to skip the yes, no confirmation during a deploy. It's a good little trick. So now that we've deployed a couple of times, let's go through the dashboard. We have an overview here, and you can see this is the link that we would go to. Uh, if I click this, I should be able to you know, redirect me to that static content. Uh, it says the region here, that's useful. Uh, any kind of quick access information you need, this is also really good. And then you see your services. Now, most of the time, you'll probably only have one service here. So this will be called default. Uh, you can see in our app YAML, I actually define it as default here. If I did want to create a microservice, I would create another app.yaml. I would call it, let's say, admin. And then you would have two services here. Now, you see within services, you also have versions. So this is the first version that we deployed. You can see the time here. 355 and then 10 minutes later we deployed this one here what you can see happened was that the traffic stopped being served to the initial instance and then started being served to the well not necessarily instance but version and then started being served to the new version it's a very important thing to recognize how this works because if you're doing something like canary rollouts in production what you want to do is you want to actually upload the version without diverting the traffic. So you want to use something called traffic splitting. So you can roll out, let's say 1% of traffic to your new application. So if it does fail, you can quickly roll back and you've only affected 1% of your users. And then you can go through and look at instances. Uh, it's useful to look at something like latency. You can see that it took 45 milliseconds in the 99th percentile to get that little static content. You can also see how long it takes for the, the boot time. So loading latency is around 700 milliseconds. So that's with a hello world application. That's actually really quick. You can compare that to like a VM would be a lot, a lot slower. You'd have to boot and do all the other stuff. Whereas app engines more like a containerized solution. It's, it's very snappy when you need to start up new instances. So, if you had a bunch of traffic come in really quickly, it would scale quite nicely. Of course, if you had a max instances at one, it's not gonna scale so quick. Here we have something called task queues. Cron jobs are very useful, so we can easily create a cron job um, simply by defining a YAML file. So if we go back to our, our GoLand project, and we create a cron.yaml so this is defining a cron job uh, description here this is assuming we've we've got some kind of handler so if we in our main function handler here we define a cron a cron handler with gin later on so we can call it slash cron slash do something that's annoying And it's got a very simple and easy to understand schedule syntax. So every day at midnight, or we can do every five minutes, I believe, something along those lines, time zone that you want it to be executed. And so if I might before had an actual time, it would have to be based within the time zone. Now, if we wanted to deploy that cron, we would go to cloud app deploy uh, cron.yaml. Let's make it every five minutes. And you should see something along these lines where the cron job is listed here. You've got the description, the frequency, and then the last run, and you can see it, it's failed. So as there's no handler, it's not gonna be able to find it, so it fails. Uh, if you wanted to debug that, you can go view the logs, or if you want to not run it every five minutes, or let's say you had this every midnight, you can just hit the run now button. 
So again, cron jobs can be used for uh, project-wide scheduling. That's very useful for that. So let's say maybe we want to do every hour scan cloud storage and save the metadata somewhere, or every hour do an audit on our security practices within the IAM, stuff like that. So you can do just about anything like you would with any cron job on a, on a Linux machine, super useful. And it's a really amazing built-in feature of App Engine.